I went to my first festival when I was in my mid-teens. I went with the same group of people for five or six years running. Yes, that is me. It's not my first festival. It made me a fat, fan of Fat and Frantic and of Deacon Blue, and over the years I saw a varied lineup from The Alarm, Eden Burning, and Steel I Stan. Span, sorry. I have very vivid early memories from my first festival years, of staying up later than I ever had done talking, well, I was a young teenager. Pot noodle lunches, again, I was a young teenager. Sharing our tent with complete strangers and our breakfast with complete strangers where they, when their tent had blown away in high winds. And a piled beyond the seat port -a In the last 20 odd years, many things have changed. There are more festivals out there, attendees' expectations are higher, and we're more willing to throw things away. As festival organise, one of your primary aims, beyond having a great festival, should be to reduce your festival's environmental footprint. And you can't make improvements unless you measure, record and publish data from all aspects of your festival, from the setup, the festival itself and the breakdown. Think about tracking things like energy use, waste production, recycling and pollution risk. If you track them, you can help identify quick wins to make improvements and to plan long-term goals. Can you work perhaps with a local university to study your data festival, to make plans for improvements as part of a degree course? In a competitive business environment, savings in resources and money are essential for all festivals. Continuous improvement resources and skills can help you drive environmental improvements for all aspects of your festival. If you make good environmental practice a foundation of your festival, your attendees may take this new behaviour home and enhance your influence and your reputation. The Environment Agency records data about pollution incidents that are reported to us. It allows us to look back at the information and in recent years causes of pollution from festivals have included sewage and chemical toilet pollution from overflowing septic tanks and cesspools, inappropriately stored sewage systems, and alarmingly direct discharges to watercourses or to land. Oil spills from faulty generator generators, vandalized systems, and damaged underground pipe work. Illegal import of waste to create path words, pathways, burning waste, leaking drinking water supply systems, discarded tents blocking the river, and smoke and air quality issues. The environmental impact of these varies from fish kills, discoloured water, foul smells, toxic chemicals in the watercourse, groundwater pollution, land contamination, smoke, odour and air quality issues. And of course, as festival organisers, this has a financial impact on yourselves. If you cause pollution, you are going to have to pay cleanup costs, which may include paying for professional companies to come and do the cleanup. If you go to court and you're found guilty, there are legal costs and fines that you'll have to pay. You'd have to pay to restore the environment, for example, restocking fish in a river. Pay victim surcharges if the amenity value of the area that's been polluted has been lost. And of course, there's the environment agencies, investigation costs, and for any equipment that we've used. This photo shows a pollution incident from the summer of 2001. Chemical toilet waste from a pollution, from a festival not far from where I lived, was stored in a pit in the ground that wasn't lined, and it leaked directly into the local watercourse, turning it bright blue. It caused the death of nearly 300 fish from the toxic ammonia levels in the water, and affected nearly four kilometres of the brook. The sanitation company had to pay almost £17,000 in fines and court costs. And of course, the headlines in the local press at the time that the pollution happened, and later when it went to court, all named that festival as having caused this major pollution incident. If this happened nowadays, the way these fines have changed, fines are calculated has changed, they're now based on a company's turnover and profit, so they have the potential to be very much higher than they were before. It's frustrating for the Environment Agency when the same festival causes the same pollution incident year after year, despite us working with you. 
and we would prefer to work with you to make sure it doesn't happen. So I hope to make you think today about some things you can do, preferably without teaching you to suck eggs. Oh, sorry, technology is getting away from me. Waste can be one of the biggest and most visible expensive pollutants at a festival, yet it's easy to manage, to measure and to make improvements. You need to think waste hierarchy. Aim to reduce the waste that's produced from your festival by encouraging attendees and trades to only bring onto site what they really need. Encourage reuse by providing reusable water bottles or drinks containers as part of your ticket cost and encouraging attendees to take their possessions home with them when they leave. Promote recycling. Clearly label all of the bins and make sure there's a general waste bin next to your recycling bins so that your attendees don't contaminate your recycling or just drop their litter if they can't find the right bin. Give a reward for people who collect bags of recyclables, perhaps a financial or meal or drink voucher. Think about making sustainable procurement a condition of vendors' attendance, for example only using compostable plates, bowls and cutlery. Plan where your waste that's left goes when it leaves your site. Use a certified company who recover energy from your remaining waste. And don't think disposal. Make a plan to aim for zero waste to landfill. Carbon dioxide emissions from travel can also be a large part of your environmental footprint and it extends well beyond the boundaries of your festival. Travel can be a high carbon activity depending on how people choose to travel to your festival. Yet it's fairly simple to measure, perhaps with post-festival post surveys, and there's a known impact per mile for different forms of transport. Consider the relative importance of travel options on your website. Think about giving green options first that reduce the carbon dioxide emissions instead of putting car, car, cars right at the top. Work with train and cus or boat, bus or coach operators. Develop a train and ride service, perhaps with discounted train tickets. Can you have renewable energy shuttle buses from local transport hubs bringing people to the site of your festival? Try to reduce the number of cars travelling to your site. Can you set up or promote car sharing options or increase car parking charges year on year? Work with local authorities and the police to reduce traffic congestion by introducing temporary one-way systems or blame priorities for buses or cars with three or more people in them. And possibly contribute to local infrastructure improvements to reduce the impact of your festival on local communities. Consider mending potholes or improving local bus stops. There are so many things to think about to include in the long-term improvement goals for your environmental performance at a festival that obviously in just a few minutes I can't mention them all. If you have a permanent site for your festival, considering investing it to make it better for your attendees, the environment and the local community. Think reducing carbon dioxide emissions from the setup, travel, lights and sound systems. Look at your energy, electricity supply and use. Can you consider renewable energies or generators that run on biodiesel versus the national grid supply? Source food and resources for catering and promotional items from the local community or fair trade suppliers. Look at the best options for your sewage and grey water. Can you collect, store and dispose of them? And if they're taken off site, how far do they travel? Because that will add to your carbon dioxide emissions. Make your drinking water supply safe and leak free. Create dedicated waste handling and storage areas. Install roads and pathways to prevent soil erosion. And look at your site's drainage to prevent mud or sewage runoff into watercourses. Nobody wants festival attendees to have memories like this. It's not only a health risk, but it's illegal if your toilet waste has found its way into the water and it affects the reputation of your festival. Living in the UK, the weather is always a concern for outdoor events. You need to carefully consider the layout of your festival. If it's in a field site, where you locate camping areas, where the stage is, where storage and waste handling management areas are. Check our online flood maps for river and sea levels, surface water res flood risks and reservoir flood risks. So use these to identify areas that you can avoid putting strategic parts of your festival site. 
if you have GIS skills or somebody who has GIS skills, light detection and ranging data is available free of charge and you can create your own detailed flood maps. Work with the bodies who are responsible for surface waters, be it the environmental regulators, local authorities, drainage boards, to check and unblock any culverts, grills and bridges before and during your festival so that water can flow freely off your site. Keep track of Met Office weather predictions that have increasing accuracy near your festival and sign up for online flood warning and river level services so you have advance notice of any problems and can warn people or move them if you need to. Because without festival people, festivals wouldn't happen. They are a temporary town or city, especially on a field site, where thousands of people are gathered in one place generally speaking, without any significant infrastructure. And just because they're having fun doesn't mean that they can forget that they can affect the world they live in for better or worse. They're on your site and you have the, the power to influence their behaviour now and with a lasting effect. Can you link with UK or international environmental goals like the United Nations Environment Programme? How your attendees be affect, behave affects the reputation and longevity of your event. Make sure you know what they, you, they know what you expect from the very start by including information with your tickets and on your website. Because if it does go wrong, the environmental regulators have powers to take legal action against you, and it can be costly in fines, reputation and future attendance. Many festivals have green ambassadors, volunteers who encourage people to do the right thing, and how they do this can gain the hearts and minds of the rest of your attendees. Think about creating a mascot or a character for your festival. Develop short films to show on screens between acts that include good social and environmental behaviour. Can you use social media to create a pictorial wall of shame for people who disregard considerations for the environment, who pee in the wrong place, drop litter or waste water? Ask your attendees what they'd like you to improve for future events. What do they expect and hope for from their festival experience? Check people coming onto your site at the start of your festival. If they have a tent, mark their ticket or wristband or scan their individual barcode or QR code. And here's the rub, check they still have that tent when they leave. If it's missing, consider fining them, banning them from next year events. After all, most of your events are well and truly sold out. Or give them higher ticket charge next year for that individual person. After all, you have to pay to remove and dispose of their tent. Sign up for a Green Festival Award or two. Show your commitment to protecting and improving our environment. Consider what's important to you, your festival attendees, and pick the award that fits it best. Or, if you can't find one, challenge the AIF to develop their own Green or Improving Environmental Footprint Award. The options for environmental improvements at festivals are great. Continuous improvement can start today and will make savings into the future for you and for your festival and for all of us. Thank you. Any questions?